the last lecture we discussed the basic principles of memory hierarchy and we noticed that the underlying idea is that there is locality of reference and you can bring data or instructions from a lower level memory to a higher level memory and reuse it several times. So, thereby you gain in terms of the speed of the higher level memory and the effect is of getting capacity of the lower level memory. Uh, today we will specifically focus our attention on cache memory which is uh, the closest to the processor and lies in between the main memory and the processor. So, I briefly mentioned about the mapping alternatives, we will elaborate further on those and uh, then we will start looking at the performance issue. So, uh, how does the processor performance or the time to execute a program changes in light of uh, cache accesses, in light of uh, memory hierarchy particularly cache and the main memory. Uh, we will see the influence of choosing different memory organization on the miss penalty is the additional time one has to spend when a miss occurs and uh, we will look at different alternatives which exist uh, at uh, various stages read stage, load stage and so on. Uh, so, so the, these different alternatives have again different cost and performance implications. <coughs> so, we are talking of uh, uh, typically three levels of memory, in many cases they are more. So, you have a cache which is closer to CPU, main memory and uh, so main memory is the reference point. So, there is a faster memory closer to CPU called cache and a slower memory but uh, giving large capacity which is uh, beyond the main memory. So, uh, typically uh, you have a vast variation in terms of their access times. So, for example, the CPU registers uh, with the current technology uh, require only a fraction of nanosecond to access. Okay. So, of the order of uh, let us say 0.1 nanosecond, these are figures which uh, change every year. So, we, we are looking at these as more as a ballpark figure and I am not talking of exact values. Uh, cache which is made of uh, SRAM or the static RAM is uh, of the order of 1 nanosecond. Now, this could be less or more particularly if cache gets integrated with processor which it does in most cases, uh, the value could be lower. But there are uh, cache memories of the chip also, then it could be even little higher. <coughs> the main memory which is uh, basically DRAM or dynamic RAM technology is typically an order of magnitude slower as compared to cache. And uh, the backup memory or the secondary memory which is uh, built around a hard disk drive, uh, this has a much slower, so you can see there are several orders of 5 or 6 orders of magnitude. Uh, slower, but here there are two different kind of timing which are involved. One is time to reach a point where your data exists, okay. you are trying to access some particular information on a disk uh, to reach that point on the disk because it is a moving uh, me medium. It may take of the order of a millisecond or, or a couple of milliseconds, but once you reach that point the transfer takes place faster and the rate of transfer could be. Uh, of that order at uh, some 10 megabytes per second of that order. So, uh, a, any decision you take about organizing these levels, one has to bear in mind the kind of order of magnitude of difference between various levels of technology which exists. <coughs> so, we uh, the, the first question we came across was how to map the addresses of the main memory on the cache. Okay. So, given a data or instruction which resides in some particular address in the main memory, where should you place it in the cache. And the simplest solution was to uh, take the memory address modulo the cache size and you, you get the location where it gets positioned in the cache. So, there is a fixed position. The other possibility was that uh, allow anything to have anything to be placed anywhere okay. and th there is a cost implication of doing so although it gives you maximum flexibility. So, typically uh, most often what you have is something which is in between the two which is called set associative. So, given any address you have uh, 
range of locations in the cache where it can possibly exist. So, so what it means that uh, a, a set of uh, locations in in the memory or set of addresses in the main memory will compete for a small pool, but uh, it is not they are not mapping to a single one. So, uh, let us say if uh, 16 locations in uh, main memory compete for uh, 4 location cache, still you have little flexibility and uh, at least 4 of them can reside at any time. So, uh, as, as you go from direct map to fully associative, you get increased flexibility. The degree of set, degree of associativity in set associative case uh, gives uh, the size of each set. Okay, um, more more the degree. Typically, you talk of two, four, eight, sixteen, but generally not more than that. Uh, more more is the degree of associativity. More is the flexibility, and uh, eventually it shows up in performance. <coughs> So, uh, I have uh, uh, redrawn the diagrams of uh, hardware structure for these and I have tried to uh, have organization show for cache access uh, with direct access mechanism uh, with one block size or larger block size and as associative access. So, so let us look at it one by one. Uh, in these all these I have uh, kept the cache size as same. And you could see that uh, the field sizes in the address will vary accordingly. So, now I am assuming a 4 k words cache size, right? And main memory address we are assuming is a 32 bit byte address. So, so you have 4 gigabytes, and here you have 4 k words, which means 16 k bytes. So, we are talking of 16 k byte cache memory. And uh, in direct access uh, case, uh, this gets addressed by a 12 bit field here. Okay. 12 bit field will select one word and you can actually uh, get 32 words of data from here. So, the, the access will require that you index into one row here, look at the tag, match the tag with the tag field of this. So, so different uh, main memory addresses which can map to this cache address, this cache location uh, would differ in terms of tag okay. and the word which is sitting here uh, will be identified by the tag value it is holding here. So, so you match the tag and if tag matches then it is a hit, uh, if tag does not match it is a miss. So, if uh, hit occurs you can read this otherwise you ignore this and do something else. Uh, there is an additional bit which we call as valid bit which indicates whether something has been placed here or not because initially you may have an empty cache and uh, as let us say as the program begins initially you will get lot of misses and uh, the cache will get filled up. After that after get it gets filled up it will be a matter of replacement you get new words uh, they replace the old word and so on. So, uh, you, you are not only matching the tag, you only look you also looking at the valid bit and if uh, both conditions are uh, met only then you consider it as a hit. Now, let us uh, extend the size of the block. Okay. Uh, in, in this diagram effectively each block is a unit of transfer, uh, uh, each sorry each word is uh, a unit of transfer, each word is also an accessible or addressable unit here. But now we talk of uh, a block which is let us say 4 words in this case or 16 bytes. So, uh, the same capacity of cache would involve now uh, 1 k blocks okay, because each block is uh, 4 words. And uh, you can imagine these four words of a block to be uh, laid out uh, horizontally. Logically, they are uh, forming part of one row, and they carry a single tag. Okay, so the the mapping here is in terms of uh, one block at a time. And uh, as uh, misses occur, as you need data or instructions, you will typically get one block uh, from the memory, with the hope that you are cap capturing some spatial locality. So, if you are referring to this word 
uh, it is likely that soon enough you will refer to this word and then this word. So, the uh, as we would see later that it in terms of transfer of data between memory and cache it is more economic or, or better in performance to uh, move some, some uh, set of words not a single word ok it is advantageous to uh, transfer blocks of data. So, once you have a miss uh, you might do little more work and uh, reap the advantages later on. So, in this case the index field in the address reduces to 10 bits ok and we will still have still have same 18 bit tags right which need to be matched. So, uh, given an address we will find either its entire neighborhood that entire block there or entire block absent. So, 2 bits in the address uh, could be used to select one word out of these 4 words which you pick up from the cache. Uh, actually another name for the block is line cache you also talk of cache line which means same thing as block and uh, why it is called a line is because logically you imagine this as one row. Okay, now, let us look at uh, uh, set associative organization mm, something wrong with the diagram some lines are not showing up. Okay, so, we are considering in particular four way set associative organization that means, each block uh, will have four possibilities it can uh, appear anywhere within a set. So, each horizontal line here forms what we call as a set and there are now 256 sets. So, again factor 1 by 4. Uh, so, each set gets indexed by 8 bits. Okay. Uh, and uh, you would notice that to compensate for that the tag size has become larger right. So, it is now identity of uh, 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 a particular block in the set uh, which is now uh, 20 bits because the, the, the index size is reduced. So, 2, two bits go to the, the tag. Uh, the, the reason for this another way of looking at this is that now there are actually uh, more words which can actually get placed here ok 4 times as many words which can get placed here as compared to the previous uh, situations. So, I am assuming uh, the, the sizes have shrunk here now uh, this is one block which means 4 words or 128 bits and uh, the whole thing can be thought of as organization with the 4, four blocks there are 4 quadrants here. So, given an index uh, you are selecting uh, you are accessing this entire row uh, corresponding to a set and uh, within each a tag matching will be done in parallel. Okay. So, you are you are reading out tags matching with this tag field of uh, the address and uh, match may occur anywhere. Okay, any of these matches and therefore, we have an OR gate. Okay. So, there is also a valid bit which is being looked at. So, if any of these shows a match there is a hit if none of them shows a match it is a miss. Okay. Now, uh, depending upon where a match occurs we, we would need to pick up a word, okay. but before that what we are doing is uh, out of the block we are picking up the, right, the required word. Okay. Uh, these there is a multiplexer with the you with four words coming in and one word going out each of these and these multiplexers are being controlled by uh, this two bit field which we consider as a block offset. So, these multiplexers smaller ones are actually same as what I showed here and then there is another round of selection done here. So, uh, these match signals will enable one of these and that could be uh, finally, taken as the data. Okay. So, you, you would notice that there is a replication of this matching hardware which is the extra thing there are uh, more bits which you are spending on tags. So, these are the overheads of increasing the degree of associativity 
and uh, the advantage is as I mentioned earlier that you are likely to reduce the miss rate. Okay. Uh, the, the reason being that uh, if degree of associativity is low, there are more conflicts and therefore, uh, some of the blocks which you may like to use later on may get thrown out. Any any question about uh, these three organizations? Uh, three. Oh, oh that th that's a typographic error. Uh, actually, all are. Yeah, this is a mistake. All are twenty bit. Actually, this is carried from some other diagram. Yeah, please correct this. These are all uh, twenty bit tags uniformly. Any other question? Uh, well, it depend now. Uh, we are assuming here that uh, uh, you are accessing one word, although it is. I am showing it as a byte address memory, but uh, out of this, you you get one word out, or you send one word in. I, actually, I am showing only the read operation. Write operation would be similar. So uh, the unit of transfer between uh, this memory system and the processor is one word. Okay. Uh, if if the requirement is of a byte or a or a half word, then out of that you will pick up, and uh, if there are misalignments again, multiple accesses get made. So uh, at the moment, I am talking of reading and writing a word uh, with this memory. Uh, does that answer your question? A any other question? Okay. So so basically, uh, just to summarize, uh, we have uh, memory main memory address divided into effectively three parts there is one part which we call as tag one part is set index and other part is uh, some displacement uh, within a block okay so the tag gets compared to the tags stored in the cache set index is used to select a set and uh, uh, this displacement which uh, could again be two parts word within a block and then byte within a word Okay. although I have shown it is a single field uh, this selects an addressable unit okay. whatever is the addressable unit it could be byte or it could be word it is selected with the help of these bits. Okay. Now, uh, let us uh, again uh, look at the performance issue uh, we, we in general try to characterize the performance of a hierarchy n level hierarchy in terms of the uh, time one spent at each level and uh, also the total cost in terms of the uh, capacity or the size at each level. So, it is a size which we said will influence uh, the, the cost as well as the performance and therefore, by playing around with the, uh, the, the capacity or the sizes you could achieve a suitable combination of effective time and uh, the total cost. Now, let us uh, simplify this and uh, visualize this in context of uh, two levels. So, suppose we are talking of now a simple case two levels m 1 and m 2 m 1 is cache m 2 is main memory. Uh, the excess time t 1 that means, if, if you were to get data from cache only if there was a hit then uh, uh, as we formulated earlier it is just tau 1 time we encounter. Uh, but if uh, we we get the data at uh, next level the time t 2 is tau 1 plus tau 2 because we would have uh, made an attempt at cache level failed and then made an access at the main memory level. So, uh, the the hit ratios or hit probabilities are h 1 and h 2 where h 2 is 1 we, we are assuming that there is no further level beyond main memory. So, whatever you are looking for has to be ultimately found at the last level which is main memory in this case. So, h 2 is 1 the miss before level 1 m 1 is always 1 okay, because uh, there is no 0 level. So, uh, before that it is miss we have to start from level 1 only and m 2 is simply 1 minus h 1 right. Now, in terms of these we can express t effective as uh, this was the formula v, v sigma m i h i t i. So, m 1 h 1 t 1 plus m 2 h 2 t 2. Uh, now, putting these values we get this as h 1 t 1 
okay, plus 1 minus h h 1 t 2. Uh, if you replace t 1 t 2 by tau values, what you will get is tau 1 plus 1 minus h 1 tau 2. So, either way you can look upon this. So, intuitively you could see this is very straightforward that if there is a hit at the cache, the time you spend is t 1, if there is a miss, the time you spend is t 2 or uh, one could argue this way that uh, tau 1 is the time you in any case spend whether there is a hit or miss, the additional time is spent if there is a miss and that is additional time is tau 2. Okay. So, so in uh, more uh, common terms, uh, this is often written as average memory access time is the hit time, the time you spend if there is a hit plus miss rate which is 1 minus h 1 into miss penalty that is tau 2. Okay. So, this is the term penalty is that this is the punishment you get if you are not able to find things in the cache. So, now our ultimate interest is in program execution time that uh, given a program with which executes certain number of instructions how much time it takes and that that is what we had mentioned as the ultimate measure of uh, performance. So, so, this will be instruction count into cycle time into typically we talk of only uh, CPI, but now we say CPI uh, plus the extra cycles which I call memory stall cycles because what happens is that when, when there is a miss you uh, hold back the CPU you uh, similar to the data hazard you introduce stalls. Okay. So, uh, you do nothing waiting for a few cycles till data comes from main memory and is supplied. So, uh, the, the cycle you spend in actually executing instruction uh, normally if there is uh, no miss plus the additional cycle you spend when there is a miss. Okay. Uh, and uh, this factor memory stalls per instruction is uh, miss rate multiplied by miss penalty multiplied by memory accesses per instruction. So, now memory access per instruction would de depend upon uh, the kind of instructions you have and how often various instructions are executed. So, in our architecture we have assumed that uh, each instruction is one word instruction. So, one access is made to fetch an instruction to fetch that instruction and load and store are instruction which uh, make another access to memory. Okay. So, uh, now you, you can so, so memory accesses are either one or two in different instructions and with uh, appropriate weightage if you find the average you will get one point something as uh, average number of memory access per instruction. So, miss rate and miss penalty are same thing right. Uh, so, uh, when miss occurs this this many often the miss occurs every time you uh, incur so many extra cycles and uh, th this miss rate has to be seen in conjunction with how many times you make memory access per instruction. So, so this uh, product gives you memory stalls or the extra cycle you spend per instruction because of misses. Any question about this is that clear? Okay. So, now uh, in, in view of this if you were to improve performance from uh, cache organization point of view uh, what is it you could do? Uh, so, basically you could improve on any of these factors. Okay. So, actually uh, in, in the second one hit time is uh, sort of subsumed in this right. Uh, yeah, yeah hit, hit time is actually uh, subsumed in this. So, if there is no, no miss uh, we have assumed for example, that you can access memory in one cycle. So, so that is actually taken into account while counting the cycles of an instruction. Okay, so, uh, overall performance can be improved if you uh, reduce one or more of these things or if, if you uh, do a change which reduces some, but increases something else, but uh, then you have to ensure that advantage is more than the loss. So, there are different uh, techniques which will either try to reduce miss penalty or reduce miss rate or reduce this product in the process they may be increasing one, but on the whole reduce the product 
or they could also try to reduce hit time. So, we have to keep this at back of our mind that uh, when you are comparing to a more alternative, what does it do. So, uh, the miss penalty uh, is dependent upon how you transfer data between memory and cache and we looked at three possibilities that is you have a one word wide memory and one word wide bus other extreme was this one that you have a, a memory as wide as the block okay, and the bus is also equally wide. So, this is the fastest possibility, uh, but very expensive therefore, there is a alternative arrangement which is interleaved memory. So, uh, well it is not necessary that the width of the memory here or the degree of interleaving should be same as the block size. Suppose, block size is 16 words, uh, even if you have four way interleaving or four word wide memory, it will still give you some advantage. Uh, so, so, larger the width here or larger the degree of interleaving, better it would be. So, let us quantify this to uh, some extent for some cases. As an example, suppose you have uh, one clock cycle which is required uh, to send the address to the memory. Okay, 15 cycles are required for RAM to have access internal that means after address uh, RAM takes some time uh, before it gives data. So, let us say that is 15 cycles. Now, these are CPU cycles okay. one, one memory transaction may be different or the bus cycle may be different, but here we are assuming that bus also takes one cycle for sending data. Okay. The, the two may not necessarily match in this example we are taking figures like this. Also, let us assume that block size is 4 words. So, in the first organization where you had one word wide memory and one word wide bus, uh, you will send address once and then go through 4 transactions, 4 cycles every time spending 15 cycles for access, 1 cycle for transferring data. So, total number of cycles or the miss penalty in terms of number of CPU cycle will be 65. Okay. In case B, uh, this 4 factor reduces to 1. In one shot, you will access 4 words, transfer all the 4 words and therefore, you spend only 17 cycles. In the last case, uh, you will make only one access to the memory. All 4 modules or all 4 banks of memory uh, would be ready with their words within 15 cycles, but then you will take 4 cycles in the bus to send them to the cache. So, 1 plus 15 plus 4 which gives you 20. Now, uh, we can also imagine intermediate situations. Suppose, in case B, uh, the memory and bus were 2 words wide. Okay. Then what we will have here is a factor of 2. Okay. We get 2 words at a time and we do it twice. So, uh, this will be 33 which is somewhere in between the 2. And if degree of interleaving was 2 here, then what you would do is, uh, this 15 plus uh, in 15 cycles, you will get 2 words out, spend 2 cycles in sending those. So, 15 plus 2 17 and that 17 has to be repeated twice. So, uh, 17 into 2 34 and 1, so it will be 35. Okay. Uh, one thing I would like you to notice is that uh, what you are achieving here is closer to this rather than that. Okay. And in in the intermediate case also, this is 35 and that is 33. So so difference is not uh, so much, but the cost is much lower. Uh, here I assume that you physically have uh, two or four or more different memory banks which where addresses are interleaved. Uh, but in uh, DRAM, in dynamic RAM, what happens is that internally it, it has a structure which gives you similar effect. Okay. So, what is th that is called page mode in a dynamic RAM. Uh, in, in a DRAM, the storage cells are organized actually as a two dimensional structure in row and columns and uh, it, it is organized such that uh, you the addresses has two parts row, row address and column address. So, you give a uh, row address and entire row is accessed and kept in a buffer. Uh, from that buffer you can pick out things faster. Okay. So, so time to access one word out of the row which has been kept access and kept in the buffer is much smaller. 
So, effectively what you do is uh, you, you can think of uh, this as a page which you have accessed and uh, if you are referring to a block of data within which lies within this page you can make faster access. So, first word takes longer, but subsequent words come out faster. Uh, so, reading multiple bits from a row can be done very fast. It can either be done sequentially, uh, that is you, you uh, give, you do not give even column address repeatedly, you give one column address and then uh, consecutive bits can be read out or you, you can uh, also randomly read bits out of this page or the row by uh, giving only column address, row address is given only once. Okay, now, uh, this is what we have discussed is the uh, basic operation, uh, within this there are lots of variations which are possible and they have their own implications on uh, uh, performance. So, uh, we will talk of variety of variety of ways in which you can do read, that means uh, uh, initiate data of initiate data transfer between memory and uh, cache load means how the data gets filled up in the cache, uh, fetch means when you initiate a transfer, replacement means uh, when a new block comes, how do you choose which block to go away and uh, what happens when there is a write hit or a write miss. So, so, that we have not dealt with and there are possibilities there also. So, let us look at each of these one by one. Uh, in reading, one variation is that uh, when you are making an access to the cache, okay, at the same time you might initiate an access to main memory in anticipation, right. Uh, so, so, if cache uh, shows you a hit then you can abort that, if, if it shows a miss then you can continue. So, you, you would gain initial uh, one or two cycles which are required for cache hit, so that is called uh, sequential or concurrent read. Secondly, when, when you have uh, the data uh, brought to the cache, uh, one approach could be that first you fill up entire block in the cache and then out of that block you give one word to the CPU for which it had halted. Okay. So, CPU gets uh, stalled for one word, suppose you are doing load word, but uh, because of miss you are getting entire word, entire block from the main memory. So, uh, if these two are sequentialized that is first you fill up the uh, cache and then transfer data to uh, processor then it takes longer. What you can do is that as the required word out of the block is getting filled into the cache you can also transfer that to the processor. So, there is kind of forwarding path can be created so that uh, the data state comes from memory to processor. So, so, that is with or without forwarding. Uh, it, it could be typically one cycle, two cycle, I mean, ideal would be one cycle read, one cycle write, uh, but it, it could be more multiple cycles. And then again things vary whether when you have multiple level of cache, so typically first level of cache you like to have synchronized with the processor, uh, but subsequent levels may not necessarily be. Okay. Uh, now, the question is also of how do you load different words which form a block into the cache. Suppose you are talking of a uh, four word block, right 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, then uh, simple most simple thought would be to uh, bring these into the cache in that order. <coughs> okay. But uh, one might say that if if the miss occurred for word number 1 within that block, then why not start with this. Okay. So, particularly uh, when you are forwarding the data to CPU, it may be uh, advantageous to fill up 1, 2, 3 in that order. Okay. Uh, you, you might just leave the words before it unfilled and uh, the, the, the valid bits would have to be now 1 per word and not 1 per block. Okay, so, you can keep uh, those words invalid and these are valid, uh, if, if you require those then you can fill up those or alternatively you could uh, 
start in a round robin fashion start with 1 go to 2 go to 3 and then fill up come back and fill up 0. So, in a wrap around fashion you can load all of them, but start at the one which you need most immediately. Okay. Uh, fetching means uh, when do you start the transfer there uh, typically what you do is uh, called demand fetching that only when you encounter a miss then you fetch the data. Okay. So, that is demand fetching, uh, but you can again anticipate things and uh, do it before time ahead of time you can fetch and this uh, could be this prefetch, which means uh, getting the information ahead of time in anticipation this could be initiated by the hardware <coughs> or by software. So, there could be hardware prefetching or software prefetching. Uh, one simple mechanism used for hardware prefetch is that when you are getting one block get another block just the one which is following it hoping that uh, you, you are going to have sequential references or uh, it could be software driven where uh, a programmer may be able to uh, guess more clearly what is required ahead of time. Okay. So, you, you one has to have special instruction which will create which will uh, uh, actually cause a miss and artificial miss and then uh, force the hardware to get a block ahead of time. <coughs> So, now uh, there, there are open questions here, uh, how much ahead can you initiate a prefetch by software? Uh, if you if you do it too much ahead, uh, you might uh, do superfluous work, because it may be that uh, you are thinking that in, in your program flow you will go certain way, uh, but if you are doing too much ahead maybe there is a branch point in between and you may go elsewhere and you may not use what you anticipated. So, there, there could be wasteful transfer and you, you may basically load the memory memory processor bus. Uh, other question is how often you do it, do you do it always or do you do it uh, sometime, uh, again it is a matter of uh, trade off and judgment. <coughs> Replacement issue comes uh, when a new block has to be brought and an older one has to be thrown off. Okay. In a direct mapped cache uh, there is no choice okay. a new block comes it has to go to a fixed place. So, it is trivial, but when there is some degree of associativity you need to find out uh, which suppose it is a four way associative then which of the four uh, you need to replace. Okay. So, that that is decided by what is called replacement policy and uh, most commonly used policy is LRU or least recently used. So, you need to keep track of uh, which of the four blocks was most recently used, which was least recently used and the one which is least recently used <coughs> is uh, the one which is replaced. Alternative strategies are least frequently used instead of counting when was it used last you, you keep track of how often it was used from the time it was brought or you could use a simply FIFO approach one which is brought in earliest gets thrown thrown out or you may do it randomly of course, which is uh, uh, that means, you, you do not think just uh, arbitrarily replace something. Uh, uh, all these are uh, some kind of heuristics okay. uh, what has been found in practice is LRU is uh, uh, most suitable. Okay. Now, this is very important and uh, this has very profound influence on the performance. Uh, there, there are two kinds of right policies which are followed. Okay, we, we have so far focused our discussion more in terms of read that is you are trying to get data. What happens when you are trying to write? Uh, so, you can you can follow two approaches one is called write back other is called write through. In a write back what you do is you, you keep on writing in the cache okay. and uh, uh, in write through you directly write in the main memory. Okay. So, now uh, first let us assume that there is write hit I mean these choices come when you have write hit or write miss in both cases. Uh, first let us examine uh, write hit case. So, write hit means that the 
the address where you want to write that block is present in the cache. Okay. In a write back case, you will uh, update that, you will write into cache, you will not write into main memory and as a, as a consequence, uh, main memory is not up to date. Okay. When do you up, up to date, when do you update the main memory? When this block which you had modified is uh, about to be thrown away. Okay. Before this gets thrown away, you must make sure that main memory is updated. So, so uh, to do it judiciously, what you need to do is with each block you need to maintain a bit which is called a clean bit or a dirty bit. Okay. So, uh, you may get some block only for reading and you may keep it clean, but moment you write you call it dirty and uh, when at the time of replacement, if the block which is being replaced is dirty, then you update the main memory, otherwise you do not have to take that trouble. In uh, write through, what you will do is you will actually write in both, okay. you will write in cache, in parallel you will also initiate write in main memory. Uh, in case of uh, write miss, uh, write back arrangement would require that first you get the block from the main memory into the cache, serve the miss first okay, and then write in cache only. Whereas, in write through, uh, you have a choice of getting the block or not getting the block okay. uh, and th those two differences are called write through with write allocate and write through without write allocate. That means, now imagine that there is a write miss, okay, which means that the block where you are trying to write is not there in the cache. So, uh, one possibility is that first you get the data from the main memory into the cache and uh, since it is uh, write through, you write there in the cache as well as in the main memory. Okay. The other possibility is that uh, if the data is not there in the cache, does not matter, you simply go and write in the main memory. Okay. Now, the, the problem with this is that you will save the time, although you will save the time of getting data from the cache, uh, but you are likely to encounter more misses. Okay. Uh, whereas, uh, in case of write back, uh, you will definitely bring a block and then you can simply keep on writing in cache, because writing into main, main memory would be more time consuming. Uh, in any case, what is typically done is that you uh, do not write into main memory directly actually, you write into buffers. So, if you are following write back policy, the buffer will uh, accommodate one or more blocks, because you are writing one block at a time. Whereas, in write through, you are writing one word at a time okay, and the, therefore, the buffer would allocate, buffer would uh, accommodate a couple of words. So, uh, what CPU does is that it will uh, write either a block or the word as the case is into the buffer, which may typically be possible within a single cycle. And then data could get transferred from this buffer to the main memory in its own due course. Uh, the, uh, this, this could cause problems, for example, suppose you are writing something which is uh, still sitting in the buffer and very soon you require to read it. Okay. So, now data is sitting in the buffer, it has not reached main memory and you want to read. So, from where do you read? You have to have mechanism which will either let you wait till this gets written, till the buffer gets cleared okay, or it should be possible to look at the buffer, figure out if the data you wanted to read is waiting somewhere in the buffer and read from the buffer itself. So, those complications arise. Moment you uh, think of any such architectural improvement which uh, tries to improve the performance, you have to often look at these complications or side effects which arise and uh, have to make sure that the meaning of the program does not go wrong. Okay. So, uh, the, the processor should do uh, the job correctly, uh, so, so all those checks have to be made. Yeah, write, writing into main memory means that uh, what, what was there in the main memory will get replaced by something new. Uh, I was that you were asking? Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually. 
uh, well okay if you if you think uh, why would you write in memory i mean whatever you have uh, attempted to write in the memory let's say that is getting written in the cache but uh, if there was no subsequent use of that it was useless okay you, you would read that and print or do something so so the last thing has to be uh, reading of what you have written okay if if there is a if the last uh, let's say last statement is an assignment to some variable okay and that variable has not been read subsequently then it is uh, do, doesn't matter whether you update this in the cache update this in the me main memory or not so uh, updation of main memory should actually be forced by uh, reads eventually if you have read and taken action then doesn't matter if it goes to main memory or not you are terminating the program anyway sir in write back you said that the buffer has to be in blocks in write back when we follow the yeah when yeah. we write simply words only which word is has changed you said that the buffer will need to be of blocks we will write blocks from the cache to the memory yeah. why don't we write words in the, that case uh, okay see the, the reason for uh, transferring blocks is that it is uh, uh, more efficient okay so your question is that suppose in one block only one word was modified yes uh, what you are saying is right uh, it, technically it is possible what you can this uh, dirty flag has to be then with every word and not with the block so if you are able to if you are a, if you are willing to maintain one bit with every word which is uh, indicating whether it is dirty or not then you can take the trouble of writing only those many words uh but the experience with uh, uh locality says that uh typically you would have dirtied many words it will be more often the case that uh in a block it is not it is less likely that only one word is dirty you would have dirtied many more words so uh, statistically it it uh, turns out that it will be better to maintain this at block level only okay although there could be situations where uh this is overdone any other question okay uh finally let me talk of a uh, couple of variations in the overall cache organization as such okay so so you could uh think of uh either a cache being there just for instructions okay or a cache being there for just the data right or a uh, separate cache for instruction and data which is called basically split cache uh, unified cache means that the cache is for instructions as well as data right uh, so uh, the the pros and cons of split and unified cache uh, are not very difficult to see uh, split cache allows specializing of each part okay Uh, because data may have some behavior cache may have some behavior so some policy may suit instruction cache a different set of policies may suit data cache and you can choose these two separately uh, if if you have two separate caches in unified you have to have a common policy uh, split cache also i not written here but uh, it also gives you parallelism uh, if you have unified cache then they could be in a in a pipeline implementation they would be resource clash okay two separate caches means that you can be simultaneously accessing data and instructions on the other hand a unified cache will allow best use of the capacity okay suppose uh, you you can afford let's say 16k bytes on the whole uh, if you were to split you you may have to make a decision 8 byte 8 kilobytes for this 8 kilobytes for that and at at some point of time in the program execution your requirement may be more for data less for instruction at some of the point more requirement for uh, one and the other okay so uh, if if you're not splitting then you are using entire uh, 16 kilobytes and uh, uh, instruction data will share this as and when uh, to the extent necessary so unified cache utilizes the capacity better but uh, in uh, in case of split you you may find at some time you are short of uh, cache words in instruction sometimes you are short in data sometimes you are su surplus in one and surplus other okay so that that's a variation from one point of view typically uh, in multi level caches the first level is invariably 
uh, split cache okay and uh, second level is most often a unified cache then uh, you can talk of uh, on chip cache or off chip cache okay cache which is integrated with the processor on the same chip uh, uh, once, once you integrate then you are constrained by the chip area of the processor and uh, the they may be constrained on the size but the advantage is of uh, speed so uh, on chip cache is typically fast but small off chip cache can be larger but relatively slower and uh, uh, in many system you often have multi level cache so uh, you can have one level two level three level and uh, more levels you have more expensive it becomes but it gives you uh, since they are, they are orders of magnitude difference so, so you you have you can position multiple caches which are differing slightly in the performance and on the whole you are filling up the spectrum nicely okay so i'll close with the, the summary uh, so we we began with looking at the structure of how we map the addresses from main memory to cache we looked at direct mapping associative mapping and something in between which is set associative mapping uh, we looked at the expression for performance uh, both for memory access time on the average and the total number of cycles or total time spent for executing a program we look at the relationship on the miss penalty depending upon the dram organization and we also notice that uh, uh, page mode in dram serves similar purpose as interleaving looked at some variety of policies for reading loading fetching replacement and writing and uh, uh, looked at different possibilities from the point of view of overall organization thank you